Welcome to the All For Your Life podcast, where you can write a new script for your life and become the hero of your story. I'm your host, David McRae. You are the author of your life. Let's get started. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. Before we launch into the podcast, I'd like to tell you about my book, All For Your Life, Become the Hero of Your Story. This is a book for people who are at a crossroads in life and want to make a fresh start. Judging by the fact that you're listening to this podcast, I suspect that you may well be one of those people. This book is going to help you to change your narrative and rewrite the scripts in life that are holding you back. This book covers the latest science and research showing you how to become the person you want to be and live the life that you want to live. I'd like to invite you to get this book, not only because I feel it's a great book that's going to help you, but also it's going to support the podcast as well. I love podcasts, but sometimes all of those ads that you get can be really irrelevant and annoying when you just want to listen to a good piece of training or a good interview. So I therefore made the decision with my podcasts that number one, I wanted my podcast to be free so that everyone could listen to it. And number two, that I wasn't going to fund it through all these annoying and irrelevant adverts and commercials. Therefore, if you want to support the podcast and support all the things that I put out there for free, whether it be here on the podcast, my YouTube channel, other areas on social media, then buying a book is going to enable and help that process. So this is what we call a win-win scenario. By buying the book, you help to support my work and all the free stuff that I put out there. And you also get a really transformational book that's going to help you make those changes that you really want in your life. So if you feel you're someone who's at that crossroads in life, you're looking for a new direction, you're looking for a fresh start, then make sure you get this book. Author Your Life, Become the Hero of Your Story is available on Amazon in ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Whatever your preferred medium, it's there for you to go get right now. Hello, story changers, and welcome back to another episode of the Author Your Life podcast. In today's episode, we have Jason McCarthy. Jason struggled to find employment after completing his creative writing degree at university. He eventually found a nine to five and started to write novels. However, he soon realized that he wasn't fulfilled in his job and quit. After experimenting with a few different stopgap jobs, he found himself teaching English online to pay the bills, and he began sharing his strategies for teaching with others. As he started to achieve some success through this, he decided to dedicate himself to find jobs for others. The online teacher recruitment network, Digino, was born, allowing him to live a digital nomad lifestyle. Jason is currently traveling through Asia teaching English online, and teaching others how to do the same. In this interview, you will learn, don't quit your 9 to 5. Yes, don't quit your 9 to 5. The three hobbies everyone should have. The benefits of exercise beyond just looking good. What Jason has seen in his travels that links all humans together. You can learn this and so much more in this interview with Jason McCarthy. Jason, welcome to the Author Your Life podcast. Hello, David. Thank you for having me. Well, on the podcast, uh, as it's been growing, I like having firsts on the podcast. So I had my, my first husband and wife a couple of years ago, had first repeat guest last year. And this episode, we've got another first because you are the first guest I've ever had who I've actually lived with. For a short period of time. <laughs> oh, that's fair. So you haven't you haven't had your wife on the show yet? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> She's been battering down the door. Hey, when you got the podcast? Yeah, yeah, someday, honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to live together. It feels like a long time ago now. And yeah. actually the first time we've really connected since living together. So this is great. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, so yeah. good to hear what you've been getting up to. One of the reasons I wanted you on the on the podcast is because I've been seeing some of the things you've been getting up to, and I think it'll be interesting to share. And in that vein, I'd really like just to hand over to you, and um, <laughs> for my benefit as much as anyone else's, 
Uh, can you tell us some of the story that has led you to where you are today and, and what you're doing today? Okay. All right. Well, uh, let me try and let me try and keep it brief <laughs> as I can. Um, so yeah, basically, I I graduated from university and I I completely struggled to get a job. Um, I, for six months, I was unemployed, and this was really crushing for me. Um, I just you know, so I just left university. My my girlfriend at the time had left me. And I found myself no job back at my mum's place, and I didn't know what to do. Um, so I, I just started learning as many employable skills as I could. And I filled my time with just learning all these like, online courses and things like that for free, and just learning everything I can. At the time, I was also um, writing a novel, uh, because it was my final project at university to do a short novel. So I decided I would make it into a full-size novel and try and publish it. Also at the time, to put these digital skills to use, I was building a YouTube channel um, about health and fitness, just for fun and just to really practice everything I was learning. But I still couldn't get a job. Um, I was getting rejection after rejection. And obviously, I'd just been rejected by like, my ex-girlfriend at the time. So each rejection stunk so much. Um, but yeah, I had to like keep on going. I was like running an hour to the job center like every other week. And I'd go there and my advisor would tell me that she just couldn't understand why I couldn't get a job. She said I was so employable that I should be teaching courses on how to get a job. <laughs> but I couldn't get a job myself. Um, but eventually, after all this, I did finally get a job. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing was, I realized when I was in that like office job, after all of this trying to make myself employable, I'd realized that I really loved being an entrepreneur. I really loved like creating the book. I really loved creating the YouTube channel and all of that. And I, could, I just couldn't concentrate at work because I was so focused on my own ideas and my own self-belief. Um, so yeah, I quit. And I quit and I moved to Scotland. And for a while, I was a cleaner in a hostel. Uh, in Edinburgh, and I was writing books and trying to like become this like best-selling author, um, and I just had no money. I had no money at all, and all I was doing was I was teaching English online a couple days a week, and it just wasn't it just wasn't bringing me enough money, and I had I came to a decision where I was like, okay, am I gonna try and push this author thing? which has just left me as a cleaner in a hostel? Or am I gonna push the thing that is making me money, which was the online teaching thing? And that's when I left the hostel and I moved in with David <laughs> in uh, Glasgow. And I decided to teach online as much as I could. And I forgot about my writing my books and things like that. And I focused my writing onto something else. So this online teaching job, what I discovered was if you referred a new teacher to the job, you would get money. So I started writing a blog all about this job and made like a YouTube channel all about it. And in the hopes of like getting the money from referring new teachers. And this made no money for one year. It just didn't work. Um, but the thing that kept me going was, uh, that I, I really had no life because I was working so much uh, to just try and make any money to try and meet the rent like we all do. But the thing that kept me going was that people were messaging me saying how much their, my website helped them. And you know, the students that I had, they were like my only friends. They were the people that I would see every day on my laptop. These like little Chinese kids. I would just see them every day and I would have fun. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Why not? I've got like I've I've gone all in here. I'm going to keep going, and then eventually I decided I would just go traveling, and I would make videos about my travels. And as soon as I started doing that, money started rolling in. The business started working, and just since then it went from strength to strength. And I always just focused not on the money, on like how can I help people more. And the more I help people, the more the business was a success. And that's how I've come to me bouncing around Asia at the moment and still 
uh, maybe like three years now, still entrepreneur and still not seeking jobs yeah. and getting rejected for jobs. <laughs> so that's, yeah, hopefully that's yeah. as brief as I could be. <laughs> no, I, th- I think that was, that was very succinct. Uh, we were just saying before we started recording that uh, you've got to be careful on the things you see on social media because you see everyone's highlight reels and you don't see the struggles and the challenges that are involved yeah. in such a journey. Yeah. And, and certainly for me, as I've been kind of keeping track of you for the last couple of years, you seem to have, there's this kind of myth and there's this story um, that I think all of us fall into when we first come mm. across entrepreneurship and, and online marketing and stuff that you can mm. sit on a beach somewhere and you click your mouse and then something like 50 grand just kind of comes in. Mm. Your lifestyle seems as close to that as is realistically possible. So there is like mm. an element of you do have this uh, location freedom in what you do. As you say, you've been traveling around Asia and, um, mm. and you basically wherever you park your laptop is, is where you're able to do your work. How... Mm how close is is that to your actual life and is there anything you feel that you need to make people aware of that where they may be hearing oh well jason travels around asia and he's able to just work on his Mm. laptop is there anything you think people should know that they maybe aren't aware of yeah uh it's very it's very hard to make money um it's very like if you do if you do the numbers and things like that the numbers are so exciting of like, oh, I get this, if I get this much traffic to my website a month, or I get this many views, and each one of those views, maybe I can get one dollar from them, and then that would work, and it just doesn't, it doesn't work like that, you know, it doesn't work like that, and there's, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm always honest, I'm always like honest with people, I show people like how much I make, and things like that, and I say to people, people always ask me like, oh, can I make like a full-time career out of this, I was like, online teaching and things like that and I always say like I wouldn't I wouldn't like Mm. I would just use it as a way to get a bit of money whilst you work on another project or I always say just don't 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 try and copy me don't try and copy what I do because you know I don't have it all figured up and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say to everyone that I am doing the right way to live you know it's not I, I always whatever works for you and this worked for me because I, I couldn't find a job. And when I did find a job, I couldn't settle on the job. So I had no other choice but to find another way. Um, but in, I don't have a family to provide for. You know what I mean? And so I would never say, I would never want anyone to copy me if they've got a family to provide for, if they've got other responsibilities and stuff. I did it because I, I had nothing to lose. It's just me. And if I end up a cleaner in a hostel, so be it that's just me um yeah so there, there there is a lot of like truth in that you can be like location independent and you can like explore the world and discover so many great things but what people don't see is like i spent hours hours in my room alone i can attest working. to that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like yeah. and it's even worse when you live in like somewhere that's like you know got so much tropical sunshine and things like mm-hmm. that and your curtains are shut blocking it out that's even <laughs> worse than being back in Alaska in a way <laughs> at least when it's like raining or snowing you're like oh thank god I'm inside working yeah you know what I mean so yeah there's two sides to it yeah absolutely I think this is a, a really important point and this is something that I really have to temper people with as well um they'll come mm-hmm. along to my workshops and seminars and and say Dave thank you so much I I now realize what it is that I'm meant to do and understand my purpose in life. And and I'm going to start sort of committing to this and pursuing it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay in your job, stay in Mm -hmm. your steady income. Don't do anything stupid. If you think you can come along to one seminar and then suddenly that's it made, that's the book idea, that's the business, that's the new career Mm -hmm. path, what the new creative project, if you think that's going to happen, you're going to get yourself in the shit. You're going to get yourself yeah. in deep, deep trouble. Yeah. Keep everything stable and work and build because you don't know the challenges of the journey until you first embark along the journey. I think it's, I'm so glad that when you start as an entrepreneur, you have this wonderful naivety about 
how easy it's going to be and how much money you'll make. Because if you actually knew how mm. difficult it is, you would never start in the first place. You need that kind of naivety mm. to even just get you on the journey. So mm -hmm. I always say to people like, there's this, there's this horrible like motivation porn that you see all over Instagram and YouTube that mm. quit the nine to five, hustle hard, grind, work 16 hours a day, you'll succeed, you'll make loads of money. And I'm like, no, if you quit the nine to five, all you'll realize is that you've got no idea how to make any money of the new project, kind of similar to what you were saying. And you're yeah. going to very quickly get yourself in trouble. You need to have the idea ready to go. And then there will be a point you need to make the leap, but it's not on day one. You don't make the leap on day yeah. one. You build up to Absolutely. the right day yeah. to leap. Absolutely. I, yeah, I thought about it for a long time. Um, yeah. When I was in my nine to five job and uh, I only, I only, I, I was stupid uh, because, you know, I ended up having no money and I ended up like living at a hostel and yeah. And I, I used, I used all of my savings from my nine to five job and it was gone and I was back at zero again. And I cannot tell you the amount of times, even like now, even in the past few years where business has been going well. And then one day it all goes to zero. You know, and then you really miss the security of a job, then the guaranteed income each month. And I've learned so much about about all of that. So it's, yeah, it's like what you say when suddenly you get this big inspiration, you forget about all of that, and you get you get lost in dreams. And I, I'm I'm so bad at that. Um, but with this experience now, I, I'm I'm a lot more of a realist, mm -hmm. and I focus more and more on, on making income secure, and yeah, you, you don't want to be a traveler forever. And the older you get, um, yeah, you want to, you want to make things secure. So yeah, I, I guess I'm a guinea pig in a way, which I, I, I don't <laughs> mind. I, I've had a good time, but I've also had a lot of bad times as well. So yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't like to preach things. I feel guilty if people, you know, try and try and copy me and stuff. And if they have like a bad time with it, I, I would hate that. So yeah. What has kept you going through some of these times where you're looking at the bank account and you're thinking, oh, Christ, where do I go from here? What's going to happen? What's the motivation that drives you on when you face these types mm. of challenges? Well, like, I'm a very simple guy, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't want a lot of things in life, you know, like my... When, it, when people think of like, oh, what, what's your, like, your goal and your dream or your vision? Like my, my vision is that I want a really clean desk, maybe with a nice, <laughs> a nice window of a nice view and enough space and, and just so I can do my work or read. And that's it. Like, I don't want like a fast car or anything like that. And um, so it's been very hard to motivate myself through my life. So I always just have to think like about helping other people. Like I want to give my family a good life or you know whatever and that motivates me a lot because you know that desk isn't going to get me to that desk because it's not a strong yeah. enough vision yeah um yeah so yeah that's what motivates me i always whenever like you know i feel like giving up i feel like okay why did i start this and i started this because i wanted to you know make some money to help my family and yeah and i also wanted to enjoy my life as well um so yeah i just that's just what keeps you going. And I, I, I love working. So, and I love problem solving. So if there's a big problem, hey, it gets back to work. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Also along this, this journey, I can see that you've had these really critical sort of decision moments where you've said, oh, is this the right thing to do? Do I, do I quit? Do I cut my losses? Do I change? Do I do something new? And I see that's actually been a commonality through everything of trying something and going, I don't think this really works. Trying something, I don't think this really works. Mm. When you get to these decision-making points, mm -hmm. what helps you to make the right decision for you? Mm -hmm. Well, so generally what I'll do is like, I'll, I'll write everything down. I'll get out pen and paper and I'll write everything down. That helps to like clear my mind. And then I will go, I'll go to the gym, I'll do some exercise. Um, and I always make a, I always make a decision after I've just done exercise. 
because that's when I'm at my most confident. Yeah. Um, without like so without that, I would just like sort of curl up and be like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. But so I always try and get into my most confident state because I know the decision then. It it might be like it might be like not real because I'm confident, but I know it will be like decisive and positive. And that's what helps me. Um because you know there's like I, I read like Arnold Schwarzenegger's autobiography like years and years ago. It's a brilliant and autobiography. It is so yeah. good, so good. What's it called? Uh Total Recall. Yeah. And uh, one point stuck in there with me is like he had a friend uh who was basically saying it's like, Oh, you shouldn't do this. Why would you do this? Think of all the risks involved of investing in that or starting this career and stuff. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was like, Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, do do you actually think like that? He was like, if I thought like that, I, w- I wouldn't do anything. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, 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 I'm an overthinker. And it's my biggest weakness. And I can understand that other guy. So I also try and think more like Arnold as well. And that, so then going to the gym helps me to think more like that. Where it's like, yeah, all of that stuff might happen, but we've got to do it anyway. Yeah. I see, it's interesting, the example that you've used there with exercise. I kind of... I kind of came to a similar realization of the role of exercise in my life as, as much as anything else. I, I first started like going to the gym and, and playing sports as a teenager. And the reason why I did that was because I was fat and I couldn't get a girlfriend. Mm. And I thought the quickest vehicle yeah. to not being fat and getting a girlfriend was to start yeah. exercising. So yeah, I was going into the gym as soon as I, I, was, I legally could at 16, um, maybe even a few months mm-hmm. before that. Uh, I was playing sports and I kind of got to the point of um, it would have been about 20 age 24 Um, I was with Kerry I kind of knew that I knew the direction that our relationship was going in I knew that Mm. she was a woman I was going to get married to I I knew that we were kind of getting ready to, to spend the rest of our lives together and I sort of looked at how I was exercising I said I'm no longer motivated by uh, a negative body image and uh, <laughs> and hang up mm. about being in a relationship and I actually mm. I, I stopped going to the gym for about three months um stopped really doing any kind of sort of consistent regimented exercise for about three months because I was like well well I'm my motivation for it has gone like that's not driving mm. me anymore mm. and what I found for about that three month period was I found that I was getting depressed, like small, deep, mm-hmm. depressed, like literally my energy was getting lower and lower. Mm-hmm. And what I realized was, although I had started exercising with those motivations in mind, what mm-hmm. I actually hadn't appreciated till then was how many other things I had taken from exercise. And exercise is, is my drive, it's my competitiveness, it's my energizer. Mm-hmm. Like I feel so mm-hmm. much better on a day that I've exercised in the morning compared to a day where I haven't exercised in the morning. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. my motivation changed. I realized, well, actually, exercise is almost like my competitive advantage. And you can look at physiology, physiologically mm-hmm. in terms of the neurochemicals it releases. It releases your testosterone. Testosterone mm-hmm. is your drive, your competitiveness. Certainly for us as, as men, testosterone is a very key hormone for us. So mm-hmm. I actually realized that, yeah, exercise is so much more useful than just the way that you look. Actually, there's this real psychological element to it. And the reason why I love Mm. Arnie's uh, autobiography is he talks so much about what exercise has done for him beyond just getting big muscles and being Mr. Olympia is actually one of his key drivers and a mindset thing for him that he still uses Mm. to this day. Obviously, he's he's not at his Mr. Olympia size, but he, he still exercises with that same drive and intensity that he did, you know, 40 Mm. years ago. Mm. yeah I mean the amount of times where I've like you know felt depressed like all day and you know not getting any work done and then finally decide in the late evening to go to the gym and then walking back from the gym on top of the world ready ready to conquer (laughs) things and it's like I could have used this feeling when the day started so why didn't I just do it straight away and yeah I think you know exercising in the morning gets you set up you know to really really do your work well yeah uh, a mood kind of shifter that i recommend to to people when i'm working with them is go into your living room stick on your favorite song on spotify blast it up full volume and dance around your living room like an 
absolute maniac. Like, mm. got the house to yourself, brilliant. Just be an absolute, be an absolute loser and mm. dance like nobody's watching. And yeah. I promise you, by the end of that song, three, four, five minutes, it is impossible to not feel different after you've danced to mm. your favorite music. So you've got, mm. the, you've got the physical component of dancing and, and releasing chemicals around your body again the blood flow a lot of the times is just getting oxygen to your brain makes you feel better mm. and then there's a yeah. the psychological component of you have an emotional connection to that song there's a reason why mm -hmm. it's your favorite song it reminds you of a person an experience a time in your life and that's a very quick win to shift into a new state of thinking and just like you said yeah. that might be the state of thinking yeah. that helps you make a good decision yeah and it's just like it's three minutes and you completely turned your day around because yeah. you know the day is going to be different depending on the mindset you're following through with you know so and you're in control of that you're always in control of that yeah and that's what i've come to realize you know it's like the world isn't like this way you, you've, you've got to change your perception and you can easily do that you can easily do that mm -hmm. and that's what all the most successful people say like say like tony robbins he's like yeah yeah i get low i get low but i don't stay there that's the difference yeah yeah i think that's that's really important mm. let's shift a little bit into talking about creativity um your creative journey obviously started out with your reading you had the the path of being an author for a while that's something that i resonate with is is being mm -hmm. an author of my books and and actually just the same as what you said i don't make a full-time living out of my books I have to supplement my books with the other stuff that I do with the speaking, yeah. with the podcasting, with all of the online stuff. Cause it's very difficult to make a full time living as an author. Mm -hmm. I think only less than 1% of authors are full time authors. They're always an author and something, an yeah. author and yeah, yeah. a scientist, an author and a journalist, an author and mm -hmm. a, a marketer, for example. So you had this initial dream of, of being an author. And then you've got your kind of your new business and your new online stuff and the online teaching coming in. Would you like to share for some of your creative process that you've learned and developed through this journey? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so it changes a lot. Okay. It changes a lot. And here's the thing. Eh? So this is, this is a big trouble I've had for the past few months. Um, when you make passive income, it makes you very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like even if it's, if it's just enough to like just live and get by like okay you know it really destroys your motivation so you've you've got to take control of that and i i have like a million ideas a day and i find that overwhelming and i've already got too many tabs open or too many projects going on at once and eventually nothing gets done so first of all you've got to get over the hurdle of motivation and then once you get over that hurdle, you've got too many ideas. And so it's really, so one thing I do, my creative process is I came up with this thing called a clear mind to-do list. And it's not rocket science at all. It's just, I have two to-do lists, okay, in my notes app. And I always make sure in the clear mind to-do list, it only has one thing in there. So I'll copy and paste it from the main one and put it in there. I have one thing. That's the one thing I've got to do. And I will try my best not to uh, stay away from that and like get that done, get that eliminated. And then it's just an empty page, um, which I haven't, you know, if I looked at my to-do list, I still got things on there from like three years ago. They're never going to get done. <laughs> yeah. They're never getting done. Um, so it's so nice to look at like a clear space. And then that little sense of achievement, that, that's something that you've got to ride throughout the day to keep you more creative. Um, my creativity has changed over the years. Uh, when I was a teenager, it was all about music and just like writing songs, uh, playing guitar, everything. Um, and now it's all basically, it's all like, how can I use like my ukulele to create digital income? It's, it's so completely <laughs> changed. It's, it's, it's gone from this really pure artistic thing to a very like, you know, entrepreneurial economic thing. But that's not bad it's just it's okay to change it's okay to do that and i still feel happy creating in this way and creating product ideas and things like that it still it still satisfies me and now i can't sit down 
and like write a poem. It won't satisfy me because I've changed and my creative process has changed. And so you've got to accept that, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just as you were mentioning that, it made me think of, have you heard any podcast interviews with Scott Adams, the creator of the Dilbert cartoons? I haven't. No, I, no, I have, heard, I have watched one interview with him. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about something and funnily enough, it actually ties in a bit to what you were speaking about right at the beginning of the session where you're talking about you're building all these employable skills and the way that Scott describes it is that most people, they try to become the best at one skill. And he's Mm -hmm. like, well, the, the best is crowded. There's one person at the top and then there's a whole pyramid below. For example, Mm -hmm people want to be a basketball player and it's like, well, they want to be an NBA, even being an NBA basketball player. You think that there's a lot of them, but that's maybe, Mm. you know, a 10th of a percent of all the basketball players in the world. So if you're trying to be the best player in the NBA or even just being a player in the NBA, it's very, very difficult to get to the top of that. The way that he says you should look at things is try to become very good at two different skills. So rather than trying to be the top 1% of one skill, try and be the top Mm -hmm. 10% in two skills or more than two Mm -hmm. skills, because then you start to create this unique market of one, which is you. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. the way that I've taken that on is looking at, looking at my field and, and looking at what I want to do. There are far better speakers out there than I am. If I try to be, the best inspirational speaker in the world. Well, flipping Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins is up there at the moment. I'm not going to kick Tony Robbins off the perch or kick any of the other amazing speakers off the perch there. So if I'm trying to become the Mm -hmm. best inspirational speaker in the world, it's not going to work. If I look Mm -hmm. at academia, if I look at my field of psychology that I love, there's brilliant psychologists out there doing amazing research. And again, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to kick them off their perch. Mm -hmm. But what I've got is I've got two skills. I've got a good academic mind and understanding of the science of psychology and I can explain and understand it really well and I'm also a very good speaker there aren't many Mm -hmm. people in the world who are a very good speaker and a very good academic I mean you've been to university as well you've seen what academics are like with public speaking that they know their stuff but they're boring as shit man like very few of them can present and you've got the other side of things where you've got like the rah rah motivational speaker who, yeah, they can get an audience energized, but what they're speaking is just like superficial fluff. It's the quit the nine to five, hustle, grind, mm. follow your dream stuff. So, my two skills, mm-hmm. I'm not the best in either of those two fields, but I'm one of the best with those two skills. And that's what I'd like to be. I'd like to be the best speaker and academic because I don't mm. think there are yeah, many people out there who can do that. And that reminded me of when you were speaking about your ukulele that they're probably you aren't going to be the best ukulele player in the world you aren't going to be the best online teacher marketer in the world but how many people can play the ukulele and do online marketing as well suddenly that's a much smaller market that you're kind of yeah yeah yeah. In. yeah it's a very yeah it's no i think that that's a really good exercise for people to do is to think about those two things and how they combine to make you or your unique uh, self, uh, that's really good. I've never heard that before. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's great. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely have a think about it for myself uh, later as well. Yeah, I've, I've always gone, I've always gone by one thing, where it's uh, you should have three hobbies: uh, one, one to make you money, one to make you healthy, and one to make you happy. Mm. You have that next, you have that next to your job. Yeah, yeah. And if you're satisfying those those three things, your life will be very cool as well as spending time with your loved ones, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, and that's what I always worked on. That's why I was always going to the gym. Um, and say if you would like go into the gym and you were part of a sports team as well, you know, that's like, you know, that's two for the make you healthy and so that's too much. And then you're like struggling for your life and you have no time. But generally it doesn't have to be like something mega, mega. If, if the thing that makes you happy is reading and that's your hobby then do it then that's fine make time for it and one to make you money like maybe making like a youtube video like reviewing the book so you're combining all of them 
And as long as you got to you you know got to the gym in the morning before that, then you know you're having a nice complete life. Um, so the, 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 that's what I sort of live by. I always try and hit those three things. Yeah, yeah, that's, mm. that's really good actually. I haven't I haven't heard anyone sort of express it in the, in that way before as as having the three hobbies. I've obviously people talk about having your finances in order, having your health in order, having your hap- happiness in order, having your relationships in mm. order. But that I think just makes it a little bit simpler, just saying, well, what is like my one thing, my one hobby that kind of fills that bucket for me? And if I'm doing mm-hmm. a hobby in each bucket, then all my buckets are full. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it just helps. Like my life is one big to-do, to-do list. And I literally <laughs> have on there, like my, my, I have to do my hobby to make me happy. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> otherwise you get so lost, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you get so lost in work and then the day is gone. And you're like, oh, I haven't gone to the gym yet. Well, all this, so I make sure to have it in there. Like I have a work list and I have a life list, and I have to complete each of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked what you said with uh, your clear minds list, and then you've got your to do list. Uh, I liked mm-hmm. how you said you've got things on there from like three years ago, but you've just sort of accepted yeah. they're not going to get done. Yeah. I think I think that's really important: is learning not to put pressure on yourself to do absolutely everything and recognizing when something is no longer a priority Mm -hmm. yeah it's very hard to figure that one out it's very very difficult and the biggest thing i've learned over the years is like not to put pressure on myself so i put so much pressure on myself and i put myself into situations where i had to succeed um otherwise i'd be homeless or otherwise you know I, i wouldn't be able to afford food and I'm I'm a very anxious person. I'm a very shy, introverted person. And I, th- I threw myself into those situations so I would grow. And I wouldn't recommend that to people, you know? Because I was throwing myself into that situation where it was daily. I would recommend to people, if you are quite like shy and unadventurous, every now and then, do something that scares you. I don't believe in the do something every day that scares you. Because if I, me doing something every day that scared me, made me very stressed every day and I, I couldn't complete my daily tasks to the best of my ability so i focus on that you know it's the whole thing of like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time and if i can't take my little bites each day because i'm trying to eat the whole elephant at once yeah. what good is that so yeah every now and then do something that scares you but day to day you know look after yourself don't stress yourself out too much you know don't put too much pressure on yourself yeah it reminds me of another saying um, that I also don't like. This saying, live every day as if it's your last. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't, I'm not I'm, a fan. Yeah, I'm like, if you lived every day as if it was your last, we would all be addicted to drugs and riddled mm. with STIs because, because yeah, that's yeah. what we would do. Last day of our lives, let's get as high as I can and let's have as much sex as I can before, before the 24 yeah. hours are up. Like, you can't live every day with that kind of hedonistic pursuit of of pleasure yeah. you've got to have that longer term vision of yes you want to enjoy yourself day to day but you have to do it in a long term sustained way rather than just trying to mm. like blast the most out of every 24 hour period because you just can't handle that and you can't sustain it over the long term and that's why it's so important to find these little hobbies that make you happy every day yeah and uh, that because that, 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 you can't have this mega exciting life every single day like i said you know, I, i've gone traveling around asia and stuff i'm doing like bungee jumping every single day I, I would never bungee jump i'm too anxious for it but what i do do is i find i found the things that i truly enjoyed and i was okay with them being boring you know what i mean and i was okay with being someone that you might consider like an influencer having a boring life i was okay with that because it was what made me happy and if i was happy then it would bring in more suitable people to my life you know because if you're never being yourself this is a big thing i've been thinking about for a long time now if you're never being yourself how do you expect to meet the right people in your life if you hide the things about you that make you happy you'll never connect with someone who likes the exact same things and of course you want to connect you know if you really like golf and you're ashamed of liking golf you'll never meet like your future wife who loves golf and you won't have your golf themed wedding. So <laughs> be, be, be open and honest about the things that you like and the, the things that you enjoy. 
Yeah. yeah. I'd like to start rounding off all of the ideas that we've been talking about. And I've got mm -hmm. a few questions in line with this. And I always say to guests, just because these are the last few questions, don't feel that you have to give short answers. Don't feel that we can't have discussion points from there. Just the, the kind uh -huh. of the, the sort of the, the sloping down of, of today's narrative. Uh -huh. The first of these questions, and I'm going to change it slightly from the way that I usually ask it. The question that I usually ask is, is related to love, but I'm going to change it slightly because of your experience, because you've been traveling and because you've been living in lots of different cultures. From all the different groups and communities and societies that you've seen and lived in, what do you think are the common things that connect us as humans? Mm. Okay. That is a tricky one because it is always, it is always like in my, okay. Yeah, I've got it in my, so in my lowest moments, <laughs> when, when I, I felt like, when I felt like giving up, yeah. And I felt like I had no one. It always felt like life would send a person to me who would help me. Uh, it would just be completely out of the blue. It'd be like a friend. Um, you know, so I, I've, there's been times like I was like homeless for a while in Thailand. Like I had nowhere to stay and things like that. And, you know, all of a sudden, like a friend came out of nowhere and said, you know, you can come over to this, like of a completely different village and stay uh, in this hostel that I work at. And I stayed there and ended up like, you know, sitting each morning, like looking at the buffaloes in the farm and like reading my books and stuff. And it was amazing. And like from a really bad situation came this good situation. And so the thing that I, I've noticed, especially in Asia for sure, is that everyone is looking to help each other, you know? And we, we forget that, um, you know, that people are willing to help. It's not all doom and gloom. And yeah, that's why I always like, in my mind, I always try and help now after experiencing all of this um because it does feel like we're all we're all connected in a way we can all tell when someone really needs the help you know and like i think that's there yeah, that's that's one thing i've learned from all of this yeah. what are you grateful for in your life uh i mean i am very i'm very grateful like for that, I'm grateful to like be a part of that, to be a part of like being able to help people and, and, you know, being, being helped as well, because I, yeah, I'm so grateful for being helped because as like in our field, when you're doing this whole like speaking thing and like, you know, online business, entrepreneurial thing, um, you have the whole imposter syndrome, like you never make any mistakes or like you're, you have all the best advice in the world and everyone should listen to you. Um, but we need help too, you know? And I'm very grateful to be a part of that, of like this whole, yes, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a student, you know? And the, the person who taught me, they're also a student as well. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. I didn't want to just give an answer, like I'm grateful for like sunshine and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, let's, let's, let's do this, let's do this right. But yeah, that's what I'm grateful for, the connectivity of us all just being a teacher and a student to each other. So we are in the year 2020, we're right at the mm. beginning of, of this year. And um, my theme for 2020, one of, my, one of my big words is vision. And I mm. thought, when I thought of this kind of towards the end of 2019, I thought I was being so creative and original. I was like, oh, this is great marketing. We'll talk about 2020 vision. It'll be like when you go to the, the opticians and, and you get perfect vision, it'll be helping people clarify what they want and what they want to focus on throughout the year. Start of the year rolls around and I realized that everyone else has had the exact same idea. There's courses and workshops and, and books and everything on 2020 vision. So. I was not very creative at all, but nonetheless, yeah. I'm still running with it. I'm still running with this idea of this year being the year of vision. And I do think it's a good theme. And I do think it's an important time to be thinking about it, not just at the start of a new year, but also the start mm. of a new decade, thinking about 
well, where do you want to be in 10 years time? Because you have to start that journey right here, right now, in order to be able mm -hmm. to get to where you want to be by 2030. So mm -hmm. the question that I'm asking everyone who comes on the podcast this year, and I'm asking you just now, Jason, what is mm -hmm. your 2020 vision? Okay. It, it's tough for me. It's tough for me because it changes. Like I, I had no idea. Like right now I'm in Taiwan. I never even heard of Taiwan uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> I mean, I saw on a t-shirt said made in Taiwan. That's the most I knew about it. And now I live here, you know, well, I don't live here. I, you know, I'm traveling through here at the moment. Yeah. And so the, that's why I said to you, I'm very simple minded. And like, I keep the simple vision in mind of like, what would make me feel very relaxed, very content. And that's that desk with the view. And so I, I don't have like grand visions. I have an idea of like, I want to make this amount of money because this amount of money will allow me to do this and create a better future for my loved ones. Um, but I've always wanted a dog. <laughs> and that, that might sound silly, but to be able to have a dog, I need to have a place of my own. And I need like a secure lifestyle and I need the time to devote to uh, learn and educate so I can train that dog to be a, to be a good boy or good girl. And um, so that small vision of like, I really want a dog, which is very like emotionally motivating for me. That leads to lots of other visions as well that I need to work towards to create that. But yeah, when it comes down to it, I just want a dog. But how do I get there? And that's, that's my vision for the future. Yeah. I think that's a really good point that you make is I think a lot of people make these arbitrary kind of goals. I want a dog. That's an arbitrary thing I want. I want a six pack. That's an arbitrary thing I want. I, yeah. I want my own business. That's an arbitrary thing I want. But I, I think that it's really important, as you said, to think about all of the mechanics and, and mm -hmm. the lifestyle that surrounds mm -hmm. that particular goal. So, okay, you want a six pack, but are you prepared for the lifestyle that surrounds having a six pack. Okay. You want a business. Are you prepared for the lifestyle that surrounds having a business? So thinking of your, your, I don't even like the term goals. I prefer the term targets and I'll, that's a rant for another mm. time. <laughs> but I think it's really important that, yeah, okay. I want a dog, but what do I need to do in order to make that happen? And or in order mm. to be happy with that end destination rather than I've got a dog, but it's not really, all the things that I thought it would be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, the dog's running around, you don't know what to do with it. And it's like, ah, this is not, this is not a target. <laughs> yeah. This is not the dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's a really good way to say it, the mechanics of it, the mechanics of your, of your goals. That's, mm -hmm. um, that's definitely something to look into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you and me, Jason, we're, we're nineties kids. And I think we're going to get to enjoy most of this this century this 21st century i think it's such a key 100 years in in humanity i think this century really defines our future and defines like number one are we go even going to exist or not and number two if we do exist what type of of species are we going to be so i think this is a super important century i'm really glad to be a part of it in some small way and my aim is to make it to 2100 i'll be 108 so i've got to push it a bit but hopefully if sure. the breakthroughs in, in medicine and science um i'll be able to get there hopefully you'll be able to get there as well we'll both be uh we'll both be well over 100 but we, we can do it i think with medicine yeah. and science yeah. uh but we may yeah. not we may we may not see the end of the century but people yeah. who will see the end of the century are those who are being born right now the the young children of today they are going to go through and see the next century. They are going to go through and see the impacts and the consequences of the decisions that we make in the 21st century. Mm. I'd like you to imagine that you've got one of these children in front of you now, very young, no older than five years old, and you are going to tell them something that you think is going to help them to live the life that mm. they, they want to live and live the life they're capable of living throughout this century to come what would you be saying to that child? Yeah. I would say to them, like, really focus on what you, what you enjoy doing and don't ever see it as a waste of time. 
because you know people people make a living from playing video games nowadays you know and that was a waste of time for us 90s kids yeah <laughs> yeah from from our from our parents perspective you know it wasn't a waste of time you know people people were making a living out of doing the things that they actually enjoy and why is it wrong that you enjoy it you know and so that's what i would say to them it's like yeah really really focus on what you enjoy and if it feels like it's a waste of time then just keep on trying to enjoy it and then one day that might be the thing that makes your life you know flourish so taking it from the beginning of life to the end of life as i said you and me were going to try and see the end of the century but at some point mm-hmm. eventually one day will be our last day hopefully in 2100 when you get to your last day, Jason, mm. and you look back over the life that you've lived, what legacy do you want to have left during your time on Earth? That's the thing. That's the thing, man. Because like when I go when I go to a party, you know, I'm not the life and soul of the party, <laughs> but um, I do still get invited back for the next time. So that's what I mean. It's like um, I, I don't want to leave. I don't want a statue of me or anything. I don't want to make a big song and dance or whatever. Um, I just, uh, I just want to leave behind like positivity and the main thing I want to leave behind is like security for any of like my, you know, if I have kids one day, any future things like that. Um, and yeah, it it just, the, the mentality of like, I've made this a bit more chill for, for everyone else, you know what I mean? And that's all I ask, really. I just like the main thing for me is making people around me feel comfortable. Yeah, I in my company, like I, I, because I don't like people uh, forcing me to do things or like peer pressure or anything like that. So whenever I'm interacting with someone, I make sure they feel comfortable and stuff. And I, and that's just what I want from my presence anywhere. Feel comfortable around me. I'm not judging you. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna do anything. So yeah, that's my legacy, and that's that. <laughs> that's all. That's all. That's all it is. It's very quaint. <laughs> so, Jason, for folks who've been listening, and, and despite your repeated warnings, they are interested in what you do. They are interested in how you've been able to build your lifestyle and, and facilitate the stuff that you do. Where mm-hmm. would you be pointing people to to get in contact with you, find out a little bit more about the way you do things? Okay, so yeah, I always send everyone just to the website. Uh, so it's, it's digino.org, so like D-I-G-I-N-O.org. And yeah, on there, I don't like to send people to loads of places like Facebook. Blah, 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 blah. Um, on there, you've got everything. There's like an about page where you can read about everything. And then that has all the links to all the other most important places. And yeah, the, the contact on there as well. So that should be fine. Yeah, good stuff. Well, Jason, I'd just like to thank you for for joining me today. I'd like to mark your honesty that you've shown throughout this, your honesty of saying, this is who I am. These are my weaknesses. These are my flaws. Uh, Here's all the reasons why I don't recommend you do what I do. Here's all the the warnings and challenges that I face. So I've appreciated you coming in with that honesty today. And I've also appreciated, as you said, right at that last answer, how sort of kind of chill and relax that you've been throughout um this has been just a really nice sort of conversation it's felt very conversational obviously because um mm. we have a lot to catch up on for the last couple of years yeah, so, that, sure. so it has been like a conversation yeah. uh, so i've appreciated yeah, well, that when are, we, when are we starting the podcast mate like... <laughs> i haven't been even recording <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so i just like to thank you for for bringing that into uh in today's episode no worries man it's been a pleasure if you've enjoyed today's episode and you'd like to take your education with all for your life a little bit further then i'd love for you to join us in the brand new all for your life academy the all for your life academy is an online educational community where you can start a new and exciting chapter of your life in the academy there is ongoing extended exclusive training to help you build the skills that you need to grow and develop in your life You get to join a community of aspirational story changers who are supporting you, encouraging you, and celebrating with you along your journey. 
I'm also in there as well, providing tailored specific mentorship through live question and answer sessions and priority access through messaging and emails. If you'd like to enroll in the Academy, you can do so for just $27 a month. That's £20 for those of you in the UK. When you join, you get three awesome bonuses. You get an audiobook, you get an online course, and you get a ticket to one of my live events. So if you're ready to start something new and exciting in your life, come join us in the Author Your Life Academy. You can find out more about how you enroll by going to www.authoryourlife.org forward slash academy. I'd love to see you in there. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd appreciate it hugely if you could head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review for the podcast. With your review, please be as honest and detailed as you can be. Because with honest and detailed feedback, that helps me to adapt and grow this podcast to most serve you, the listener. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, then make sure you subscribe to the podcast. That way you aren't going to miss any of the future episodes that we've got lined up for you. Until next time, remember that you are the author of your life. You hold the pen and you can write whatever script you want for yourself. So go out today and write yourself a beautiful story.